click the subscribe button, hit the bell icon to never miss another update. In Yemen, there were many lush gardens with a variety of fruits on the branches of their trees. Baba Rahman's garden was large and beautiful among all other gardens. Baba Rahman, who was a benevolent and faithful old man, had worked all his life to make that garden, and the fruit of his garden grew every year. Everyone knew that if one day all the gardens in that area became dry and barren, Baba Rahman's garden is so blessed that it could meet the needs of all the people. Baba Rahman distributed some of the crops and fruits to the needy. That's why in the harvest season, poor people were happy and groups of people from far and near went to Baba Rahman's garden to harvest as much as they needed. He had four sons, the youngest of whom, Rahim, loved and helped his father. But the rest were unhappy with their father's generosity. When Baba Rahman died, it was close to harvest season. So his sons came together to decide what to do with the crops. The three older brothers said, from now on, we have the garden. We won't give anyone free fruit. Everyone who wants fruit should pay. But my brothers, this garden is a blessing because of our father's generosity, said Rahim. The brothers said, stop it, Rahim. You don't have to advise us. We are doing this for your own good. When harvest season came, the poor lined up in front of the garden, as they did every year. They came with their baskets and waited for the garden to open, but to no avail. The brothers came to the gate of the garden. One of them said, Go and beg somewhere else. There is no free fruit here. Another brother said, Baba Rahman has died. This garden is ours and we will not give away free food. If you have money, please step forward. The poor left with empty baskets without saying a word. Rahim, who did not know what to do out of embarrassment, ran to them and said, No, that this was not my father's advice. Rest assured that one day, God will have mercy on my brothers. Days passed, but the brothers' hearts did not show mercy. Every day, the brothers broke hearts by making fun of the poor people who gathered in front of the garden. Rahim said to them, If you do not help the poor, God will take this garden away from us. But no one listened, until one summer night, when the weather was clear and everyone was asleep. For a moment, black clouds appeared over the garden and terrible lightning struck the trees of the garden. Then, the whole garden caught fire and the lush garden turned into ashes. The next day, when the brothers arrived at the garden, they thought they had made a mistake. The garden was burnt to ashes, and there was smoke everywhere. They wanted to return, but Rahim said, No, my brothers, we are not mistaken. This garden is our garden that has caught fire. When the brothers looked at the garden again and realized that it was really their garden, they started fighting with each other and blamed each other, and went to the ruler of the city to settle the dispute. They asked the mayor to find the culprit and punish his actions. At that moment, a shepherd came forward and said, I saw everything from the hill. I had gone to find my lost sheep. I saw black clouds coming over the garden, and then lightning struck the trees. Believe me, I have never seen anything like it in my life. I am sure it is God's work, and no one has such power. When the brothers heard this, they returned home. There they said to Rahim, I wish we had listened to you. I wish we behaved like our father. Rahim said, If you really regret it so much, I am sure God will help us to rebuild our garden. A few years later, with a lot of work and effort, the garden turned green again. This time, they invited the poor to come and eat as much as they wanted from the garden. Years later, the garden became even more lush and green than ever, and the brothers always thanked God. In the distant past, there was a river called Dars, which was surrounded by a large land. This land had 12 small towns. Next to one of these cities, there was a very large old tree that was said to have been planted by the son of Prophet Noor. That's why all the people worshipped it. People gathered near the tree on Eid and made sacrifices for it. The victims were sometimes so many that the area around the tree was filled with blood for a long time. People in different parts of the city dug many wells to draw water from them because no one had the right to even use a bit of river water to drink. They believed that it was sacred and that no one should even touch it. And anyone who used the water was brutally punished. They even punished those who were unaware of the law. Their religious leaders wrote more and more difficult tasks, forcing everyone to serve the king of the tree. So God sent them a prophet. The prophet of God went to the chiefs of the city and asked them to worship God. He asked them to stop killing people and to not force them to worship trees and do hard work. But they made fun of him and kicked him out of the court. They arrested the prophet and threw him into the deepest well of the city and covered him. The Prophet asked God for help. The night came, 
The sound of the prophet's cries came from inside the well, but only the leaders of the infidels heard his cries, the same ones who had thrown him into the well. From that night on, these moans grew louder and louder every night, so that some of them went insane due to insomnia. Some were banging their heads against the walls, and some were going to the desert, but none of them thought of freeing the prophet from the well. Until one day, the earth began to shake. The trees shook so badly that they fell. Instead of repenting, the infidels tried to stop the trees from falling. One of the infidels shouted, We must sacrifice at the foot of the trees. They did, but it didn't help. The trees came down and fell on them, and the whole city was screaming and crying. Water had leaked from the wells and flooded the city. The people were suffocating under the mud. The same few people who had thrown the prophet into the well were now sinking into the mud. Before drowning, they saw the prophet standing on a hill, shaking his head in regret. The prophet loved the city, which was now destroyed.